Hello friends, I am Dr. Aniket Pavnoji and you are watching Basic Chemistry. Welcome to the next lecture of Bonding in Coordination Compounds. In the last lecture, we have seen the postulates of molecular orbital theory and we have also seen how the bonding takes place between the central metal atom and the surrounding ligand group orbitals. In this video, we will see some examples where the molecular orbital theory is applied to transition metal complexes. Let's start the video. In the last video, we have seen the molecular orbital diagram for octahedral complexes consisting of sigma bonding. This consists of metal orbitals on the left hand side, ligand symmetry orbitals on the right hand side and at the center there are molecular orbitals. At the left hand side there is an energy level. In case of metal, there are first 3D orbitals, there are 5 3D orbitals. Among these one is a set of T2G and the second is EG. T2G stands for triply degenerate orbitals. There are three orbitals which have same energy and EG stands for doubly degenerate. There are two orbitals dx square dash y square and dz square which has same energies. Above 3D there is 4s orbital which is termed as A1G. The symbol A indicates non-degenerate that is it is a single s orbital. Above 4s there are 4p orbitals. The symbol is T1U. T stands for triply degenerate orbitals. On the right hand side there are six ligand orbitals as it is an octahedral complex. Among these six, one is A1G, three are T1U and two are EG. EG orbitals overlap with each other with EG ligand group orbitals to form EG bonding and EG antibonding. Then A1G overlaps with A1G ligand group orbitals to form A1G bonding and A1G antibonding. Similarly, T1U also overlaps with each other to form T1U bonding and T1U antibonding. There are no symmetrical orbitals to overlap with T2G orbitals, therefore T2G remains non-bonding. The gap between the T2G and EG star is termed as delta O which is equal to 10 dq. Let's see the first example. The first example that I am taking is titanium s 2063 plus. Here titanium atomic number 22, outermost electronic configuration is 3D2 4S2. The oxidation state of titanium is plus 3, therefore titanium in plus 3 oxidation state, the electronic configuration is 3D1. Now let's draw the diagram for titanium h 263 plus. On the left hand side there are metal orbitals that is titanium 3 plus. On the right hand side there are ligand symmetry orbitals that is 6 water molecules. And at the center there are molecular orbitals that is titanium s 2063 plus. On the left hand side we will draw the energy level. First there are 5 3D orbitals. Among these there are T2G and EG orbitals. Then above 3D there is 4S orbital. Then 4P orbital. On the right hand side there are 6 ligand group orbitals that is A1G, T1U and EG. Now overlapping will take place according to the symmetry EG bonding and EG antibonding then A1G bonding and A1G antibonding and T1U bonding T1U antibonding. No symmetrical orbitals for T2G so T2G will remain non-bonding. The gap between the T2G and EG star is 10 dq that is delta O. Now let's substitute the electrons. In titanium 3 plus there is one unpaired electron and in case of ligands, each ligand will donate a pair of electrons. So 6 ligands will donate total 12 electrons in the ligand group orbitals. Now we can see that the ligand group orbitals are lower in energy because they are electronegative in nature and metal is positive in nature. According to the postulate of molecular orbital theory, the orbitals which are more electronegative in nature their electrons resemble the bonding molecular orbital electrons and the orbitals which are electropositive in nature, their electrons resemble the non-bonding or anti-bonding molecular orbitals. This is why all 12 electrons from ligand symmetry orbitals will get accumulated into the bonding molecular orbitals. Now the one electron from titanium 3 plus metal will get occupied into the higher level that is the T2G non-bonding. 
as there is single unpaired electron it is weakly paramagnetic in nature this is the application of molecular orbital theory to titanium h2o6 3 plus let's see one more example now we will see the example for FeCn6 4 minus here Fe atomic number 26 outermost electronic configuration is 3d6 4s2 iron is in plus 2 oxidation state so outermost electronic configuration becomes 3d6 on the left hand side we have Fe plus 2 metal on the right hand side 6 cyanide ligands and at the center the molecular orbitals for FeCn6 4 minus Fe2 plus metal has 6 electrons in its 3d orbitals whereas each ligand will donate a pair of electrons and that is how there are total 12 electrons in the ligand symmetry orbitals. Out of these as the ligands are more electronegative the 12 electrons from the 6 cyanide ligands will get occupied into the lower bonding molecular orbitals. Among 6 electrons of Fe plus 2 here the cyanide is a strong ligand therefore the gap between the T2G and Eg is very high. We can say 10 dq is higher than pairing energy therefore total 6 electrons will get occupied into the lower T2G orbitals. As we can see that there are no unpaired electrons it is diamagnetic in nature. Here we have to remember that cyanide is a strong ligand therefore the gap between the T2G and Eg is very high that is how all 6 electrons get occupied into the lower lying T2G orbital. Let's see an example for weak ligand. Here I am taking the example for FeCl6 4 minus. So ion 3D6 4S2, ion is present in plus 2 oxidation state. 3D6 is the outermost electronic configuration. Similarly, Fe plus 2 on the left hand side, 6 Cl minus ligands on the right hand side, and at the center, FeCl6 4 minus molecular orbitals. Fe plus 2 metal contains 6 electrons in its 3D orbital and 6 chloride ligands will donate a pair of electrons so total 12 electrons in the ligand symmetry orbitals. The bonding molecular orbitals will get occupied by the electrons of the ligands as they are more electronegative. Now we have to fill the electrons from the central ion atom. Out of 6 the first 3 electrons will get occupied into the T2G orbital. Now here chlorine is a weak ligand. Therefore, the gap between the T2G and Eg star is less. We can say that 10 dq is less than pairing energy. Once the three electrons get occupied into the T2G orbital, the fourth and fifth electrons will go to the Eg orbital. Now all the orbitals are singly occupied. The sixth electron will get paired up into the lower lying T2G orbital. As we can see that there are four unpaired electrons. It is strongly paramagnetic. We can see from the last two examples. If the ligand is a strong ligand, the electrons will get paired up into the T2G orbital and if the ligand is a weak ligand, once the T2G orbital is filled up or singly occupied, the next electron goes to the Eg orbital. That is how we can study magnetic properties through molecular orbital diagram. Let's have some examples for practice. The first example is COCl6 3 minus and the second is CONH36 3 plus. Determine the oxidation state of cobalt. Determine the number of unpaired electrons in the molecular orbital diagram and find out whether it is paramagnetic, diamagnetic or we can say weakly paramagnetic or strongly paramagnetic. Draw the molecular orbital diagram on your own and mention your answer in the comment box. Now we have finished with the molecular orbital diagrams for sigma bonding in octahedral complexes. In the next video we will see pi bonding for the octahedral complexes. If you like my video, click on like, do share and subscribe my channel. If you want to ask something, mention it in the comment box. Don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of my new videos. And keep watching basic chemistry. Thank you.